Jedi Survivor has not been off to a great start. It's another AAA blockbuster disappointment with equally busted performance, pretty much like most AAA games this year. People in the 20th century predicted that by now we'd have flying cars, but it's 2023 and what we have is this. What the fuck is Fluffy doing? <laughs> <laughs> and this. And also this. But I'm not going to talk about how and why Jedi Survivor has terrible performance issues across the board. I mean, more qualified people have already done that. I haven't even finished the game yet. I'm about 8 to 10 hours in and just reached Jedi. So bear in mind, this is not a review of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This is a review of what it's like to live as someone who is trying his best to enjoy Jedi Survivor. Sir? Sir, are, 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 are you listening to me, sir? Sir, I'm talking to you! Sir! While games in general are aiming to be more immersive, Jedi Survivor does its best to go in the opposite direction. For starters, when the game is running at 60 FPS in performance mode, why do the cutscenes drop to 30 FPS automatically? Furthermore, what the hell is up with the black bars? I get that games want to be more cinematic, but nobody is playing this game in a film theater. Even Fallen Order got that right and the cutscenes were 60 FPS. So why is this crap evolving backwards? But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? To their credit, the cutscenes look phenomenal and showcase the game's visual capabilities the best. But the problem is, the moment a cutscene gets over, you can literally see the drop in quality of everything. Models, environments, textures, you name it. And then we have crap like this. Glitches and artifacts all over the place and not to mention screen tearing. I mean, I can't even remember the last time I saw screen tearing on a console game. Things do get better when you turn performance mode off, but only slightly. Which brings me to my next point. In and around water bodies, even resolution mode is unable to run at a stable 30 FPS. So why then in performance mode am I still stuck with ray tracing that makes it an absolute struggle to maintain either the resolution or the frame rate? I get that you want to make the game look amazing with ray trace reflections and global illumination, but performance mode is, and I cannot stress this enough, for performance. Just give me a stable 60 FPS at 1440p with solid textures, a decent draw distance and details, and call it a day. PC gamers have it even worse these days. Looking at the recommended specs, it feels like every AAA publisher wants to make tech demos, not games. You want to make a good tech showcase? Learn from the Matrix Unreal Engine 5 tech demo. That's how you do a tech demo. The reason these things are so bad is because the game in itself is so freaking good. Only 10 hours in and it has every element that could make it what I like to call a perfect sequel. You know, games that improve on almost every aspect of their predecessor, whether it's progression or gameplay or presentation or adds a grappling hook. All this while acknowledging what made the first frame so great and keeping those elements in. From general movement to combat to exploration to enemy encounters, Jedi Survivor does so many things exactly right it's a little more painful to play because at times it gets so pixelated you can hardly make out any details. But all said and done, I'm happy to report that I was able to fix most of the issues from the terrible drops in resolution to choppy frame rates and screen tearing. I put the game on my 1080p monitor and turned performance mode off, basically going back to the PS4 experience. Am I going to finish the game like this? You bet your ass I am. But do I think anyone should buy this right now, especially at full price? Oh, hell no. 